winners this year for our market center tech trainers. So Ariel Hernandez is actually our trainer of the year for our market center tech trainers. And Brett Bishop actually won our culture award, which is he's for going around and doing these market centers. He's always pouring into them um, and making sure that you guys are getting the best possible training possible. So if you see these weird cameras that are following you around in your market centers and you see these nice new big screens in your market centers, but these are the reason that this is happening. So thank you guys very much for doing that. Really appreciate you guys. I'm going to step out and let you guys take this show over because you're going to be talking to us about lead generating from the media room, right? Absolutely. That's right. You sure you want to leave us alone on this? <laughs> I have complete trust in you guys. Enjoy. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. I'll be here. Ariel, Bunny, you want to lead us off? Okay. Let's do this. All right. So welcome, everyone. Like Ryan said, my name is Ariel, MCTT for KW Miami and Miami Shores. And we're so excited to come and talk to you guys about having a media room in the market center. How, what does that look like? What, um, how can it be done? What are some of the advantages, right? And also, what can an agent do with it? Right. And so we're going to have a guest speaker towards the end of someone who's been using the media room to record some awesome videos, TikToks, reels and everything and sending it out, not only on social media, but to their clients as well. And they'll share more about that um, later on. Media room. Brett, what's a media room? Um, It's a library. Is that right? Is it? Wait, what's a library? Has anybody seen a library lately? <laughs> no. So a media room. Um, I actually typically will call it a video studio because that's what it is to me more often than not. But a media room is kind of a dual purpose room, a multi-purpose room, actually. Um, as we're going to see so from some of our photos coming up, right, we have some MCTTs that actually office in these media rooms. So that's pretty cool. Um, but it can be used for podcasting and creating your videos, like you said, Ariel, TikTok videos, and, which I'm not doing yet. I haven't quite got on board with that, um, you know. But YouTube, for sure, all that stuff. Awesome. Now, the cool thing about it is that you don't have to have a state-of-the-art media room, right? It doesn't have to be like KWRI's production room, right, where they've got hundreds of thousands of materials and dollars and everything, right? It yep. could be something very simple, or it could be something where a little bit of budget was put into it, but highly effective. So we want to share with you guys a little bit of... Um, different styles of media rooms that we've found in our region, right? And three market centers in particular. So we're gonna go from simple to nice and, 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 and very useful. And then the one that we kind of put a little bit of budget into it, uh, which was one that actually Brett and I set up together. All righty. And Ariel, I'm gonna jump in here just because I always like to come back to our systems and models, right? So the Red Book teaches us to lead with revenue red light, green light, like uh, Ryan was talking about earlier. So that's how we normally, when I attack a market center of the future, I'm attacking it that way. And when we look at media, media rooms and video studios, automatically we're thinking dollar signs, and that's not the case. Um, there's a lot of valuable products out there that have value at a decent price. So we're gonna get into that. Definitely. So let's go ahead and share some pictures here with you all. All right. Okay, so here we have a media room, right? That is something uh, very simple. So, and it's actually a dual purpose. So you have a desk where, where one of our MCTTs works out of, but if you see on the right-hand side, there's a green wall and I'll show you. There we go. Alrighty, something very, very simple. They painted the wall, they have a ring light, Right, there's enough light inside the room as well and the ring light can kind of focus more on a specific area or on your face as you're recording and the green is great for videos because then you can have a videographer be able to remove the green background and put you like you are in the beach or if you're like in a helicopter right or standing on a beautiful mansion in the middle of Miami Beach or wherever you want right but it's a great way um, to be able to use that media room right now brett how hard is it to create something like this yeah so that's just finding the right color paint so i'm going to go ahead and identify that awesome mctt there that's dora cherico's office right yes um and she she was pushing hard to get that green screen for her agents and basically that's just paint there was a wall that wasn't really being used and that was just the right shade of paint 
And now, Ariel, you mentioned uh, having a videographer, but we're we're also you can get that fancy if we need to. Right. Um, but we're also trying to get this to its simplest form so that agents can adopt this technology and use it very simply. So I were, I've been actually working with Dora on this to find really easy apps to replace that green screen with video. So any agent can do it. You can kind of see over there in the corner, she's got a uh, ring light. Um, we're we're going to upgrade that one. We talked about that. We need to get one where you can actually put your phone in the middle of it. And basically an agent can come in, put their phone in there, use this app, and it will actually replace the green screen with whatever video they want. Wonderful. And that's and that's what we're talking about. It doesn't have to be something that is expensive or or luxury or you don't have to hire somebody. Right. It could be as easy as using an app that can remove the background and add an image or some type of motion behind you. Right. Or if you're tech savvy and you kind of want to do it yourself and you want to learn. Well, there's video editing software that's for free. Right. Mm -hmm. So yep. I, I use DaVinci. Right. And it is amazing. Now, I took a little bit to learn it, right? You're looking at YouTube videos and all, but it's great the amount of things that you can do when you're editing video, right? All right, Absolutely. let's go ahead and show the next one. All right. So I love the look on this one, right? And it has a little bit of, of different things, a little bit of everything, right? Um, motivation, right? It's got the mirror, which is great when you're talking in a camera. It's great to see the mirror so that you can see how you look. A lot of times we're so concentrated on what we want to say that we have a serious face. Right. Right. And it's like, yeah. hey, smile. Right. The way you feel, the way you portray your smile, your excitement is how the audience is going to receive it. Right. On the other yeah, end of that video. Ariel, we, we talk about this with each other sometimes, right? Like, dude, show me some excitement. You're like, I'm excited. You're like, well, tell your face that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Ryan always tells us, hey, listen, if you're not pumped, go do some jumping jacks, run around the market center, do something, but come back pumped and ready to go. Well, right? and, I, and that mirror is key because you really need to see what your face, the emotions on your face. One thing about video that I think is one of the hardest things to get used to is the fact that you feel like you're kind of over the top you have to have over the top energy so that it comes out enthusiastic on video for some reason it seems like video just really doesn't quite get to the level of excitement that you feel so you got to go up a little bit more <laughs> that's right that's right and it doesn't hurt sometimes to have a little bit of equipment right and so as yeah. we can see here uh they do have a light right led light to give you a little bit more. And they have this extended arm here where you can connect your phone to it and also a lapel mic that they use so that it can capture the audio right from uh, directly into the phone. All right. So great resources here. And as you can tell on the right hand side, they do have a working station as well. So this is also a dual room where one of our wonderful MCTTs works out of and the agents can use, like he mentioned, if they wanted to edit the video or anything, they're able to use it um, as well. Okay. And the so TV I, and the, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I had the unique opportunity to actually experience this room um, and the changes that that MCTT Sebastian Blanco made. Yes. This was already a pretty cool room. But it definitely looks like this homey studio that you want to go, you know, film in now that Sebastian put his touches on it. Definitely. I mean, this was day and night, right, from when Sebastian came and put his magical touch. And, and so I just want to say thank you, Sebastian, for sharing this with us from our Coral Gables office. And um, again, it has all different features, right? It, you can even talk right in front of the mirror, but still have a nice background in the back, right? So the TV can be showing pictures or, or showing material, or if you're doing, let's say, um, a market update, right? Well, the graphs can be behind you where you're talking about it and people can see that. So, so I love the fact that it has just little sections everywhere and something so simple, right? So Brett, my mm -hmm. man, what can something like this cost us or how creative can we get with this? So um, the mounts, I'm just talking about like the mounts that are holding the lights right now, right? Those are like 20 to $30 each. Those lights can actually ha be had for between 30 and 60 each, sometimes less, sometimes around 20. Um, you know, there's some, 
some furniture and decorations in there, but honestly, like the actual gadgets and hardware for the filming, it's less than two hundred dollars. There we go. So less than two hundred dollars on just equipment. The rest is decorations, right? Nice yep. little desk, some chairs where you can sit down, record some videos, right? So um, Ariel, from from a leadership perspective, even think yep. about the stories that you can tell for your market center in here, right? So I love that Sebastian, when he took this photo, he took the, he went the extra mile to put that Keller Williams reel up there. I mean, see how that pops at us, right? Yep. Imagine as a team leader, you're interviewing that top agent, that R2 that you were able to bring over to the company and film them in an environment like this. Or this is a great place to have your agents come in and, you know, you've got the ICAP uh, key right there. They can talk about that story or even just bring in their customers for uh, you know, a closing, things like that. It's a great place to tell those stories. Definitely, definitely. All righty. And now we're gonna show our last uh, media room. So this, this media room that we're gonna show now has different sides or components to it. So I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures, um, starting even from the entrance. So now this one was one that Brent and I did in my market center. Um, we did put some budget into it and it was very purposeful. Okay. So we kind of showing you three different levels, right? So this one, even from, from the beginning, what we did is that we grabbed one specific room just for, uh, the studio or media room with an on air outside so that everyone knows that when that sign is on, someone's recording, you know, don't knock, don't be loud around it. Okay. <clears throat> and even to use it in the weekends, there's a super box, where you can then unlock it and be able to use um, the room in the weekends as well. Now, this room, as you can see here, on the right-hand side, it has a step and repeat where you can stand with lights and a ring where you can put your phone in the middle. And all the, the black padding on the right and on the left-hand side are soundproof pads so that it, um, the audio can come out better. Yeah, it okay. cuts down on it cuts down on reverb. So um, these are basically like, uh, you know, a lot of us uh, kids of the 80s and 90s might remember foam egg crate. And basically that's all this material is. And you just attach it to the wall and it cuts down on reverb. One of the biggest problems with audio and I'll point this out that 50 percent of your video is audio. You can have crystal clear audio and low quality video and people will watch that video if you have horrible audio crackling and popping and cutting out in 4k video people are going to turn that video off they can't stand to watch it because the audio is horrible to listen to so this just cuts down on the reverb in the room when you have flat walls like that the the sounds the voices bounce all over the place and it just it's hard to listen to yeah one thing i know i learned uh, first coming into this role learning about media and videos and everything you're better off having better audio than video, right? Yep. So many people sometimes concentrate so much, yeah, on the lighting and, and a thousand dollar camera and everything. If your audio is not good and crisp and clear, like Brett says, you're going to lose a lot of your audience, right? Well, and you just hit it. You just hit an awesome point, Ariel. So uh, a lot of a lot of people in general, agents, um, leadership. They, they have a conception and rightfully so, because it's what we think of when we think video studio, media room, whatever is a thousand dollar camera. That doesn't have to be most of what we're showing you. And this is a prime example. This is one of those light rings that has an iPad and an iPhone holder in it. Our, our purpose is to guide uh, any market center that wants to set up a media room like this so that agents can come in with their own device, plug it in and go. Correct. Right. And so we see here, I, I kind of zoomed in a little bit. Right. So it's just a ring and it just has an adapter where you can put um, uh, that one. You can put a phone on it. You can connect the microphone to it as well. Right. And um, so, like I said, we had a little bit of budget. So we got lapel mics where agents can, can put it on and be able to um, speak clearly. And it picks it up from the microphone, sends it to a receiver that's connected to the phone. And now you have crisp and clear audio on all of your videos. Right. Yeah. And, and those lapel mics, you can actually get ones that plug into your phone, whether it's, you know, USB-C or Apple, you can actually get one of those for about 20 bucks. You can get it. You know, that's not wireless. It's on a long cord, but still you can get the cord out of your way in the video shot. And that goes a long way for that awesome audio that you need. Definitely. 
Definitely. Now, Brett, tell us a little bit about um, that bracket that we have in the back, right, with the three different um, color backgrounds. Uh, yeah, we had because that was your that idea, up. man. We had fun putting that up. Um, so this is a pretty handy uh, tool that you can get. We got it on Amazon. And this one has uh, three backgrounds. Obviously, you can see there you can get it in a one, a two, a three. And you just buy that uh, bracket set up and it has the pull down chains and everything. And what we did, we actually, we didn't buy the full kit, right? Ariel, I say we, yeah. I didn't have anything to do with your budget. That was your leadership. <laughs> but anyway, um, but your leadership didn't actually have to buy the whole kit. What we did is we actually just got the brackets and the pull chains. And then you and I went to Home Depot so that we could do this leading with revenue, right? That's, that's and we right. just bought the right PVC pipe and we cut it to length and then bought the fabric. Uh, you wanted white and black for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And then the green so that we could do a green screen in the future if you need to. And, you know, what, what did it take us? About five hours, maybe? Five hours and we set up the whole entire room. And it, it was awesome because obviously you, you shop for the materials, right? right? So some of the lighting, we were blessed and they were donated. So we didn't, we didn't spend money on the lighting, right? Mm -hmm. um, the sound but I, but I can say that lighting kit that you have, it, it's less than a hundred bucks. You can get one like, you know, 50 to 80 in that, in that ballpark. Definitely. Definitely. Now the sound pads, right? Those were cheap too. So those we actually bought on wish, believe it or not. So went to wish, bought it, came like a big old bag full of them. It was like 150 of the square, um, the square pads of soundproof pads. And I, it, this was, wasn't the best way to install them, but it's all I had. And that's so why I use a staple gun. Right, to install them into the wall. I, I, um, and I will I will just say I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> it worked in this case, but remember, that's about 14 million holes in the wall. <laughs> just don't, they're tiny though. They're tiny. Just don't tell my TO. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, so it worked out great. It was very purposeful. We wanted to do the three um, colors just for different purposes, right? Because not everyone either has the time or the ability or the resources to remove the green backgrounds. So it's easier to have maybe a white background with some lighting, as you can see here in the bottom, that gives it a nice glow. So as you're presenting and talking, you at least have something of a color or glow behind you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, just as we can see Brett right now on his camera, on, on his um, view, how he has that red TV in the back. It just gives it a nice background ambiance. And the black one is more of a serious color. If you're you know, presenting or you don't want any distractions, you want the focus directly on you, then you can use a black background as well. Well, and here's where those backgrounds are nice. Think, when, when we think about the value that this adds to a market center and to you as an agent as well, you, you know, when we're onboarding agents, um, not every market center does things the same. Some of them have photographers, others don't. You could actually come in here and get the headshot the way that, you, you know, the way that you want. You can use your own camera to do it. If you're wearing light clothes, use the black background. If you're wearing dark clothes, use the white background. And then in Canva or even in designs, right, we can remove the background now and have a transparent background. So now you can have your agent photo that you can lay over top of any background that you want. So these are just kind of value adds to you as the agent and to the market center as a whole. Exactly. And exactly. Ariel, I do, there's a question. Do you remember what the total budget was for this room? Oh boy. Um, I don't remember the total budget cause we didn't even exceed it. So I don't want to say a number. Um, but I know overall we spent around, I think it was like $300. I was going to say, I knew it was well under 500. Oh so, yeah, definitely. And this yeah, is yeah. a multi-purpose room, right? I mean, we've yeah. got, we can do all kinds of stuff in here. Now mm -hmm. I will tell you the, the step and repeat as techie and as geeked out as I get over this kind of stuff, I had no idea what a step and repeat is. So if, if I'm the only one in the room, you know, it's another Brett moment, but can you explain what that step and repeat is? <laughs> So the step and repeat, basically think about it as this um, in this way, right? The step and repeat, just like when you go to the Oscars or you go to all these Grammys and everything, right? They have this background similar to the one you see here on the right hand side. They step in front of the background, take a picture, and then the next person comes and it just repeats. 
So step so, and repeat. Step. I and am repeat. so glad I asked. When you when you explain it like that, it makes total sense. I've always <laughs> called it a paparazzi backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, you know, I mean, I'm sure it has different names. I've always known it as a step and repeat, you know, uh, but it's very useful, right? Now, now we have this one in our media room. And if you know, I was going to put it permanently against the wall where it would just be a fourth background that you can bring down. But we decided to leave it portable on the right hand side because, you know, we do have events, right? So we have our awards meeting that's outside of our market center or, or, or anything or Christmas celebration, whatever it is, right? And it's great to be able to take this down, take it with us, with the lights, right? With the light ring and just set it up wherever we're at and have the agents step, take a picture and repeat, yeah, right? Yeah, and just awesome. take a picture and, and, you know, enjoy it with their outfits and little props and everything. So it, it has dual purpose, not only here where you can record videos, but also in events where you can take pictures. And, and to be honest, I don't know, you know, if, if you happen to know what you paid for that, but sign companies normally are the ones that will uh, make those for you. And in my experience, that step and repeat cost more than everything else we did in the room. Pretty much. I mean, it, it was our, our wonderful team leader donated it. So I, we appreciate her and love her for it. And um, but yes, yes, that probably would have cost more than what we paid for the whole entire room. Right. Because we definitely tried to leave with revenue. Yeah. So um, there's a question from Isabel. Should you only use the same background for all your videos or it, is it as effective to use different backgrounds? I'm asking because so she films, you know, if I'm filming at home, if I'm filming in the office, um, I will say that when it comes to like YouTube, the main purpose of this is we're going to put this on YouTube, right? That's where we're going to get the most um, views for it. We're going to get the most traction for it. Like Chris said earlier, uh, YouTube is the second largest search engine. It's owned by Google, second only to Google. I feel like when it comes to your videos, your thumbnails that you use in your videos should be consistent because people know what to look for. I, I will say that if the background is different all the time, I me personally, I have a studio that I use, so the background looks the same. And uh, if you can find a consistent spot in your home to film and a consistent spot in your market center to film, I do think that that would be best for branding. Now, I would say, Brett, I, I, I think it depends on what the purpose of the videos are as well. Yes. Right. So yeah. for many of us that are MCTTs, our main focus is for our agents to focus on either on us, on what we're talking or on what we're showing on the screen. Right. So you might have our face in the, on one of the bottom corners. So you want a consistent background and nothing with motion or outside or anything so that it doesn't distract the person who's looking at the video, right? So I think that if you're doing, let's say, a video where you're explaining something to your clients or customers on some step of the process or something, right? So we have agents that will record a video explaining each of the process of the transaction, right? So, and they make it general to extend it to everyone. Right. So it's like, hey, good morning. I just want to say congratulations. We're under contract. Woo! The next step is you're going to get an email from our admin giving you a timeline with all the important dates during this transaction. And you're going to find that timeline right here below in this email. All right. And the next step after that is escrow deposit from the buyer. So as soon as we receive that, you'll get our next video with the next steps and our next email. Looking forward to it right? It's yeah. very important information. So I don't want anything distracting in the background. Yeah, like, no, that's key. Focus so, on me. Like earlier when we saw Sebastian's uh, media room, having the static Keller Williams logo on there is awesome or some static image, but you're right. If you have a video reel, unless there's a specific purpose for that video reel, because you're demonstrating something, correct. anything going on in the background is distracting to the message that you're trying to portray. Correct. So kind of like we mentioned earlier, right? So if you're doing, let's say, a video on the market, right? The, how's the market doing? And you want to show stats and graphs. Well, then maybe you can have a TV behind you, right? With all the graphs and, st and stats and everything. Or some agents will record videos, kind of like doing a walkthrough through a home. Then, yeah, obviously you, you do that at the home. Some other agents will record just videos talking about the city. Well, if you're going to talk or promote something in the city or restaurants or anything, then yes, go out into the street, 
walk down the streets as you're talking so people can see a little bit of the city in the background, right? So I think at the end of the day, it has to do with whatever the purpose of your video is. If it's yeah. valuable information that you want them to hear, then no distractions. If you want to tell them a story or tell them something and you want them to see it as well, then yes, go out in the street or be at your desk or, or just kind of change the background a little bit, right? So it's not so always monotone yep. or, or repetitive. So you mentioned something that I wanted to um, go back to that green screen scenario for. If you're if you're thinking of ideas, how how would I implement a green screen? So, uh, you know, I've seen from a lot of agents, they get their video from their photographer, the walkthrough video of their listing, and they'll record a voiceover for it. Well, imagine running the video of the walkthrough on that green screen while you're actually talking about it and your brand is showing because you are the brand and you're actually doing the talking head uh, walk through the voiceover right there in camera with the, you know, the video running behind you. So that's one way you could use that. Definitely. Definitely. All right, Brett, I think it's time to bring in our guest speaker for today. Awesome. All right. So I'm really excited to present this gentleman. Not only um, does he have experience as an agent, he has experience in leadership, but now he also has experience on being the director of operations and leading one of our top teams in the market center. And boy, has he really just taken this team into a whole nother level, um, including media. And he's and, a really cool dude. I've been following his videos. I knew him before from hanging out with you at your market center. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, and let's welcome Rolando Ramirez from the Rabinovich hey, team. Hey guys, how's it going, Brad? How's it going, Ariel? Good, how are Thank you? Thank you very much for having me. Good, good, excited, excited to have this conversation to pour into all the other agents. Awesome, so Rolando, quick question. How, well, first of all, why did you start with videos? Right. You came in, you came into the team. Tell us about your experience when you first entered the team. Right. Cause I know the team wasn't doing a lot of videos before you came. So why the videos? Yeah. So that's a really good question, Ariel. So, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to push uh, to all of our agents and our team in general uh, is really putting ourselves out there with our sphere of influence. Um, and one thing I found is, you know, I follow a lot of people on YouTube and um, and video and I don't know them, but because I watch them so much on video, I feel like I know them. So I feel like I have a connection to them. So I started thinking, you know, this would be a really good idea instead of just doing a conventional, say, quarterly call to my database. Why not put out a video once a week on my social media and encourage everyone in my database to follow me? Of course, I follow them back. I'm team follow back. Um, but, you know, just be able to do that so I can leverage myself, uh, staying top of mind with people without having to maybe sometimes not all the time, but sometimes having those awkward 90 day conversations. Hey, how's it going? Nothing. Oh, OK, cool. Talk in 90 days. Um, and so that's why we started doing it. That's awesome. I know for me, um, one of the ones I saw recently was you actually talking um, buyers through the process, right? I mean, th those kind of videos are huge. Yeah. Yeah, Brett. So I, I like to mix it up, you know, I, and I think it's really important for people when they're creating videos to really just be their authentic selves. Um, you know, I, I like to mix it up. So I partly do some educational videos, but then I'll also mix in some funny things here and there when I catch a trend. Um, so recently, for example, I did one on the Tinder swindler, um, where I pretended to be him for a video. Uh, and it was really funny. It got a lot of people talking about it and, um, yeah, I mean, it works. I'll tell you guys, you know, I get, and I've been doing it now for about, I think it's five or six weeks. Um, number one, I get a lot more messages on social media about people saying, oh my gosh, I love your videos. I'm not ready yet, but you know, or they'll have a question they'll contact me about, or I've been getting referrals to, um, so it's really making people more comfortable with talking to me because even though I'm not having a direct conversation with them, they see me talking, they see me on video. So they connect with me and they feel more comfortable having those, uh, conversations. That's an awesome point. So 
and and I've heard that story, um, you know, in in other uh, interviews and things. But um, for for people who are so nervous to pick up that thousand pound phone, right? When you're calling these people that have actually seen your presence on social media, it's it, it's the weirdest thing, but it's almost like a celebrity's calling them, right? And it's a much warmer phone call. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And as a matter of fact, like. I, I'll be walking down the street somewhere and I might see someone who knows me or I know them and, and they'll be like, oh my gosh, how are you? Blah, 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 blah. I've been seeing your videos. They're so good. Blah, 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 blah. So again, it's, it's a conversation starter. It makes people more comfortable with me, uh, even if it's been years that we've seen each other. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing. I strongly encourage people to do it. And another thing I want to say because when people probably heard you say, oh, you know, picking up the thousand pound phone, some people out there might have said, well, I don't want to get on camera. I'm really nervous about that. Right. Like I, I would rather pick up a thousand pound phone than put my face out on camera. And, you know, my advice is the same advice as picking up the phone. Just get into action. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people get paralyzed by trying to make it perfect, by trying to make sure every little thing is correct. And what I would say is you're going to get better with practice. You're going to get better with repetition, you know? So, so just don't be afraid to put yourself out there and, and give yourself a shot um, because anyone out there who might be judging you or, or, you know, making fun of you 99 to 100% chance, they would probably do a much worse job than you. And they're judging you because they're insecure about themselves. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out because that is a hard thing for a lot of people. But but the thing you pointed out earlier is to be your true authentic self. Right. Mm -hmm. So when we're having a conversation on the street and something comes out of my mouth wrong, do I get a chance to take it back and edit it and, you know, plug in the, the new clip where I fix that? No, those right. kinds of things happen in our conversations. So just be authentic. Um, your audience will actually appreciate that more. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it goes a long way. I mean, I, you know, people do know me as as funny. I mean, I try to be funny, I guess. <laughs> we think my, my fiance doesn't my fiance doesn't think I'm too funny, but, you know, she uh, she appreciates me. So. So, yeah, no, I mean, I, I like to mix in some comedy. I like to catch hot trends. Also, the other thing, too, is know your audience. Right. Like I I'm you know, I'm in my late 20s, about to hit the 30 mark. So most of the people are in my age group. Uh, most of my videos are actually directed to first time home buyers because that is most of my audience. Most of the people in my age are still renting. They're about to you know, buy their first property. So I'm making a lot of videos about that. But obviously, as time passes, I'm going to start also talking about, you know, refinancing, upsizing and things like that, because I know my majority of my audience. So I'm going to be directing things in, in that direction. And like I said earlier, with the Tinder Swindler stuff, like, if you see a trend that's hot, catch it and make, make content immediately because you can go viral from, from those things because people are talking about it. So Rolando, talking about uh, first time home buyers, there's actually a, one of your videos on Instagram that I wanna share mm -hmm. that I thought was great, right? Providing information to first time home buyers, but at the same time, catchy and funny. And uh, it just, it made me laugh. And I just wanna share it with everyone. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. All right. Zalo, your offer has been accepted. It's okay. After the deposit, we got to go ahead and schedule an inspection. Green, my uncle's a dishwasher and he loves to inspect everything. Uh, okay, your uncle's a dishwasher and that's great. We need to go ahead and do this with a licensed home inspector. A licensed home inspector? What's that? For finance purchases, a home inspection is required by a licensed inspector to get you to the closing table. That home inspection provides three reports which serve two purposes. One, which is a full inspection report, which lines out all the details and all the recommended repairs for the property. And the other two, which is a four point and wind mitigation inspection are reports used to get you a binding homeowner's insurance policy. A full inspection will also allow you to negotiate seller credits and seller repairs. 
I, I love that one. That was actually the last one that I saw too. <laughs> and what I love is you, you catch them with the comedy and then what, you know, the points that might be a little bit boring to hear, you've already trapped them at that point and then you're going through it. It's awesome. Exactly. Uh, the other thing too, I, I stick to reels. So I like to keep my videos a minute or less because I know people's attention span has gotten very, very short. So I like to be just very, very quick, hit the points, boom, 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 but start with something that's going to catch people's attention. Um, so yeah, you know, and I like to bring in people from my team or just, you know, people in the office, you know, the funny thing is, I'll be honest with you guys, and this is part of my personality. I'm very like shoot from the hip. So like as the week is going, I'll be thinking about ideas. But the actual like thing, like we we do them in an hour, probably less in a lot of cases, um, just depending on how strategic I need to be or if I need to change outfits or things like that. So well, that's interesting. There's wardrobe changes. I love it. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't have to be, but, but there are for Orlando. That's awesome. So yeah, if I'm like, playing two people, I'll, I'll do that. So yeah, yeah, the Tinder yeah, right. Swindler video, I did that. <laughs> yeah. So pulling people in from your team, um, do you just kind of put them on the spot? Because I can imagine that that might be a great way to break the ice and get people used to video if they don't have time to think about it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's so that's a good point. I, I have some people on my team that are a little bit more reserved about making these kinds of videos. So the way I encourage them is I say, why don't we make a video together? Right. Like, I'll help you. I'll show you what I do. You can see how I set up my reels and stuff. And so it makes them a little bit more comfortable with creating their own content. Um, so, you know, I, what I do is like I'll bring them in and I'll say, OK, so look, this is this is the story. This is what we're going to play out. Um, and this is the information we're trying to deliver. And so because you see how we have cuts in between, like I can prepare them and say, OK, take this part, say this, and then I'll say this part. And then once we have all the pieces together, I'll go ahead and show them like how I add the text, how I add the GIFs and all that stuff to make it, you know, captivating. Yep. Oh, the other thing I add the text, too, because I think of myself like when I'm scro scrolling down and watching videos and stuff, sometimes I watch them without volume. So if I have the text there, people can just read it instead of having to, to, you know, listen to the content. Let's say if they're in a public place or whatnot. That's the pro tip right there. That's awesome. Yeah. So a quick question for you. Now that you were talking about doing videos right with your team and all. Um, now, I know some of them do the videos on their own and you do it sometimes together with them if they don't feel comfortable and things like that. What reaction have you gotten? from your customers, from your clients, or even online, when they see those videos that you're doing with your team? Oh, they love it. Um, I mean, like I said earlier, like um, my friends uh, are contacting me a lot more about real estate. I had a lot of people that um, have come out of the woodworks. I had a guy last week, a friend of mine who said, you know, he's two years out from buying, but he, um, because he saw those videos, he asked me for 30 minutes of my time to explain the home buying process. And because I was able to display my knowledge in the videos and then in the one-on-one, -on -one, like he was amazed. So even if I don't have that business now, that's two years, first of all, that he's gonna be sending me referral business because now I'm top of mind and I'm gonna have him as a client or sorry, a customer when, uh, when he's ready to purchase. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just I feel like people keep me much more top of mind for for real estate um, and they have more comfort in, uh, you know, asking me what they might feel are stupid questions, which I get a lot now. I get a lot of people in my messages or texts just asking me like simple real estate stuff that they're curious about. Uh, I answer it and then I ask them, you know, what's making you curious so that I can dig out like, are they looking to buy or sell? Do they know someone who's looking to buy or sell? How soon would they like to do that? And all the pre-qualifying questions that we want to ask when we're adding someone to the pipeline. So now on that topic, mm -hmm. you're you're helping your agents, right? By doing the videos together with them because they're shy or they don't want to do it on their own. Once they share that video on their social media platforms, what reactions are they getting? Pretty much the same. I mean, people really like it. You know, we, uh, if you guys, you know, see some of the comments, for example, in, in my Instagram, it's the same for them. People say, oh my gosh, this is a great video. Thank you so much for the content. Right. Um, the key though, the key for us as a team is like, 
we like to keep it funny. We like to keep it light because if it's just too much information, like if it's just all information, um, it doesn't really captivate people. This reminds me of the bold law. Logic makes people think emotions make them act. I believe that logic, um, you know, makes you sound smart, but emotions are what connect you to people and connection is where you get the business. Awesome. Now, Rolando, what, when you're making these videos, right? What type of equipment are you using? Like, did, did you have to spend a lot of money? Did you have to have a high budget? I mean, do you have a videographer so, just following you around? So I spent enough money to get this iPhone. Um, I think this is an iPhone X. I still haven't gotten a new one. Um, and that's pretty much it. I use the, the stand in the social media room to just put the iPhone up. And something you guys were saying earlier about, um, you know, the camera, I, I actually put it on the selfie camera so I can see myself. So instead of having a mirror, I just see myself directly on video to see the, um, the video. Someone asked, what's the ideal length? Um, if you're referring to the length of the video, uh, I like to do a minute or less. If you're referring to like the height of the stand, I like to have it like probably like eye level with the top of the phone so that the camera can kind of get directly a shot of my face. And we have another question here. What's the best way to find content for these videos? So it's that, that for me is simple, right? Um, one, find your ideal audience. So is it first time home buyers? Is it second home buyers? Is it homeowners, right? What is your ideal audience? And then put yourself in their shoes and think of the questions that they are asking themselves or that they would want to ask if they were one-on-one -on -one with a top producing agent like you. So for me, first time home buyers, right? Simple, you know, how much money do I need to put down? What does my credit need to look like? How much income do I need, right? How And so like, you can start to remember because when you talk to buyers and sellers, right? When you talk to them over the phone, they, they ask you these questions, right? They ask you, how much do I need to put down? All those, all that stuff. So it's like, what's the difference between an FHA conventional loan? Uh, what does the market look like, right? So just, it might be helpful for you as you get these questions to maybe write them down in a notebook or just take a second to brainstorm them yourself. And then you can make content about that every single week. I, I love that, Rolando. And um, so, you know, a lot of market centers, a lot of agents will have a list of frequently asked questions. How about we use that as a guideline, like you just said, and that's your script for the content that you want to make. You want to make videos. Okay, let's answer this question. Let's answer this question. Let's do it in video. I can have all that as a playlist in my YouTube channel, and I can send playlists of content to my customers. Exactly. Um, another thing too, some people might say, well, I don't have an ex enough experience to know the answers to those questions. Well, if that's fine. Here's the good news. You don't need to. As a matter of fact, I, even though I do know the answer most of the time, I use Google and I verify what I'm going to say before I say it uh, with Google. And so what I do is I go on Google, I look at trusted resources, I make sure I have the right answers. And then what I do is also to the side or maybe in front of me on, on a computer in a Word document, I'll, I'll in bullet points, I'll bullet point my script. So I'll line out the points that I want to make in the video um, so that as I'm talking, I can make sure that I'm hitting them. Well, and that's a great point you made too, Rolando, right? Because what a, what a great way to promote even some of your valuable um, vendors or resources, right? What if you don't know the information, but you have a great real estate attorney title or lender, right? Yeah. And just like you made a video with one of your agents, Gonzalo, what if you made that same exact video, but with an inspection company? right yeah. or a title company or something right where you're asking them hey what, what's the process or whatever and then they they can maybe mention two or three points right so yeah. you don't have to ha know everything exactly no it's it's a great point and it's a win-win for the vendors and for yourself uh for sure so you know i i want to do that the trick is just making sure i can get people into the social media room uh, but i guess another idea that came to mind is maybe they can record their part at their office and send it to me and then I can put it together. Um, so there are some ideas for sure, for sure. Uh, All right. So yeah. Rolando, to wrap up, what is one advice that you can give to agents 
that have maybe thought about doing videos or reels or short stories or anything and just haven't gotten started yet? So my best advice is, um, first of all, make, if you're going to do this, stick to it. Okay. Don't just go and make one video and then not make another video. Like you have to, if you really want the success that I'm having in such a short time or that other people are having that you're going to uh, see later today, you have to have at least one video a week, at least one video a week, right? People have to see you in their feed at least once a week. Um, and my second piece of advice to that is, you know, don't overthink it. Like I was saying earlier, I think a lot of people paralyze themselves. Oh, I don't think I look good. Oh, I need a haircut. Oh, my makeup doesn't look good. The lighting, this, that, the other, you know, just put yourself out there. You will see, right, from your first video to your thousandth, how much you will progress. It's all in the repetition. Awesome. Rolando, if, if some of the agents here wanted to follow you or get some ideas from your videos and all, where can they go to to look at your videos or be able to follow you? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll put it on on uh, on the chat. It's Rolando Ramirez KW uh, on Instagram. That's pretty much where I'm making all of my videos right now. Though you mentioned uh, YouTube earlier, and that's definitely a place that I want to start going to as well uh, to make content. And I'm trying to find out also how to download my reels and put them onto Facebook. Um, but for some reason, this is something for everyone to know. When you download your reels from Instagram, they don't come out with audio. It doesn't make sense. But if anyone knows a workaround around that or a resource I can go to so that I can download them and re-upload them to Facebook, that's only going to increase the audience. So I'm, thank you I'm guys sure that's so that Facebook keeps you from putting those on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, but, uh, Rolando, one thing I want to point out, not a lot of people are aware of the fact that YouTube now has what they call YouTube shorts, which yes. is very much like those Instagram reels. So that's a resource too. Yes. Yes. That's, that's actually a hundred percent true. So, so yeah, I mean, the, the only thing I'm, the, the gap right now in the video content that I'm creating is I need to find a way to download the reels. I know you can do it through TikTok. So I'm also considering getting into TikTok so that I can just re-upload it everywhere else. Um, so, yeah. Um, Ariel, we've got a question. Uh, Kelly Gonzalez, I think, is raising her hand with that cute little emoji. Kelly, do you want to come on and ask your question? Kelly, you still with us? She said, oh, no. She said, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think she was showing her support. Okay, I got it. Pump in the it. air, you know? <laughs> I got to get down with the emojis. I'm not as well versed, I suppose. <laughs> Does anybody oh, have any questions thing. in these last yeah. few minutes? So another thing I was going to say, actually, this is important about the emojis. Use a lot of emojis in your captions. They're, they, cap, they capture people, um, you know, and I... A lot of people tend to write really long captions, like pretty much a, you know, written script of what they said in the video. I don't do that. All I do in the caption is just the question that I'm answering in the video, because I know myself and I know most people, they're not going to take the time to read a super long caption. No, you're right. I mean, it's, it's the whole reason that attention span thing, right? That's why you're yeah. doing minute or less videos. If I have to read it, I'm not somebody who likes to read. Um, I had to force myself to read this and, you know, great book, yeah. by the way. But um, but you're right. It's it's all about attention span. And that's the purpose of video. Anyway, we're getting it in front of them. We're meeting them where they're at because they don't want to read the content. Yeah. And hashtags too. hashtags help you get seen by a lot of people. I every time I create videos with the hashtags, I usually get anywhere between three to six new followers, just random people. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's it. a great tip. Surely. Go ahead. Um, hi, I, I'm not sure if you answered this. Um, Rolando, what do you think is the ideal length? So oh, we can't Jenny. Them, you've got to hold the attention, pardon? I said, it's great to see you, my darling. Oh, thank you, it's great to see <laughs> you. I think this is a fabulous idea. I used to thank do you voiceovers, so much. and I used to do voiceovers on realtors um, videos. But yeah. I think it's a fabulous idea. I didn't even know we had this, so I'll be. So your question was, what's the ideal length? Like yeah. how long should the video yeah. be? How long should you video? Me personally, a minute or less. 
If I do go to YouTube, I would want to keep it max 10 to 15 minutes again, because people have a short attention span. Mm -hmm. But if, if I'm on Instagram or Facebook uh, or, or, you know, YouTube shorts, I'm really trying to keep it at a minute or less because I'm just trying to hit people quick. Um, I, you know, I'll share something with you guys. Yeah, I used to do market update videos once a month. Um, and I used to put them on Facebook, but they were like 10, 15 minutes long. And I was not getting any views on them. Uh, people were not getting captured by them. And because they weren't liking, interacting with it, I was like, you know what? I got to scrap this. So what's the answer? A minute, a minute or, or less. Yeah, but what if you want to put information, give them information? When you were talking about the buying process, I mean, that takes longer than a minute. So what I would recommend you, Shirley, is to break it up into parts, mm -hmm. right? Don't, don't go and create a whole 30 minute video about the entire home buying process, um, especially with you know people like who have short attention spans, which is most people these days, um, break it up into parts, right? So if you wanna talk about how to get ready for a purchase, like you can talk about different financing options in one video, you can talk about, you know, what does the home search look like in today's market in another video? Then you can talk about making escrow, the importance of a title company, uh, an in, in inspection, you know, the financing period, the appraisal and how that works. You know, I just gave you like 10 ideas to, to do videos. Okay. Like just okay. break those all up into like one minute sections and you've got two months plus of content. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah take problem. it take advantage of playlists in YouTube. So I could have a playlist called the buying process and each minute, you know, video is one of those aspects. Yeah. We got, uh, a, we got a one more question. Vanya. Yeah, Vanya. How do you oh, search so. your hashtags? Yeah, so, I put it already on the oh, chat. Yeah, yeah, Vanya, so that's a really good question. What I do on Instagram is as I'm making the caption, um, when you, when you start writing out the, the hashtag, like let's say real estate, I like to pick the hashtags that have the most posts, because that means that the most there's a, there's the most traffic going to that. Right. So if you see like, for example, hashtag realtor, hashtag Miami real estate, hashtag, you know, it, it's, see, see how many posts you're getting, because if you're putting one, that's like you know, hashtag Miami first time home buyer, and you're seeing there's only like 20 posts on that hashtag, it's not getting a lot of traffic. But if you look up like hashtag Miami real estate, that one has like 500,000 plus posts on it. So there's a lot of traffic going to that. So pick the captions that have the most amount of traffic and, and use those in your, in your uh, caption. And when that hashtag list comes up, it's actually showing you less than a hundred posts, more than 500. So it actually yeah. tells you right there. Um, Monty had a question. Uh, when putting videos on YouTube, what is best to put to increase SEO and in helping your video get found? So just being on YouTube alone helps it get found. YouTube has a lot of built-in SEO, depending on what you're, now you gotta have a great title, right? And there's video resources on YouTube for uh, developing a great title. And again, hashtags. Hashtags are great on YouTube as well. Yeah, you there's can also other. Google it, no? You can Google well, it, the hashtags. Yeah, there's other yeah. resources, but I don't want to steal Ken Posick's Thunder because he's going to do a section later today on YouTube. So I want to have him, uh, you know, answer that question for you because he's really the uh, the YouTube pro. Thank yes, you absolutely. Lot, yeah. All right, guys, I think we're uh, out of time here. We're going to take a break and then come back for the next section. So, awesome. Rolando, you're awesome. Really appreciate you, man. Uh, it's good seeing you. You're great, too. And Ariel, Brett, you guys killed it. Great job. Uh, great content there. And can't wait to go back and watch it like 10 more times. Um, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Rolando. Thank you. Thank you.